Mark, it's the second hour of News Hour, and this is the part you have all been waiting for. The discussion tonight, because it's about the ongoing strike by the medical doctors. There are a lot of outstanding issues, but they tell me that there are basically only two issues on the table tonight. I'll be talking about the two issues on the table tonight, and we already have CS for Health, and Kumicha Wafula. You know Beldin, you know Beldin well, I would I don't have. Bel Belding told me today, Ken, make sure you say Nahumicha. Yes. <laughs> All right, before we begin with the CS, let's go back in history to the date today. We'll bring up the newspaper, if we have it now, uh, the history to the date today, the 20th of uh, March 2015. All right, that is the headline then. Ruto wants URP rebels to brace for tough battle. That was the headline on the 20th of March 2016. And uh, the message the deputy president then says the leaders in the region must walk and work together to benefit the community. But there's a sub headline there. I'm saddened by cheating in exams. That was the late President uh, Moy. So that was your headline back in history to the day today. URP rebels to brace for a tough battle. You know it went ahead and URP at one point was dissolved. We'll also be taking you to the video of the week later on. But let's begin our discussion tonight because um, the doctors are still on strike. It is day seven today and the CS is here to answer all the questions we've been asking you to push throughout the day. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And perhaps the first question, before we begin this discussion, I'd like to know, are you sitting here substantially as the CS of you contemplated resigning? Because there's a lot of calls. CS Nakumicha must go. Have you contemplated even heeding to that call from not only the doctors, but everyone who think the health sector is messed up? Uh, I haven't. You know, leadership capacity and capability is tested during a crisis. So these are the times that people will really know who Nakumicha is. I think they've just been seeing me. We are going to solve this issue. So you're going nowhere? We are going to resolve this issue. The doctor's and issue? Permanently. Yes. Okay. Why are doctors on strike? Why did you fail to avert, avert this crisis? Now, uh, they have raised a number of issues which we have been responding to, some. And uh, some will need uh, other parties to respond to. Uh, Ken, as you are very well aware, that uh, as employers, the Ministry of Health employs a certain number of doctors, and most of the doctors are employed in the counties. So the issues that they are raising now emanate from uh, uh, a collective bargaining agreement that was signed in 2017. Ken Mejungu, I was in the cabinet secondary in 2017. But the ministry was I running was in 2017. I was busy doing something else. Yes, yeah. the, ministry the ministry was, was running, running in 2017. Yes. By the way, that CBA was signed after a strike of 100 days yeah. that started in uh, December 2016. So there are matters that are in that CBA that what was signed then was supposed to have been achieved by now. By 2024. By 2024. Actually, mm -hmm. that CBL was supposed to lapse or lapsed technically in 2021. Okay. Yes. So when a CBL lapses, then parties get into negotiation for another CBA. Fresh negotiations. Yes. But just hold on. You told me it was 2017 to 2024. Why was it lapsing no, no, in 2021? No. The, the CBA was uh, 20, 2017 mm -hmm. to 2021, 22. Not mm -hmm. sure when exactly, but that is when it was lapsing. Mm -hmm. So we have been in discussion up to now to sign a new CBA. So whatever is there lapsed. But you know, uh, in labor, some people say that once it has lapsed, it has lapsed. And others say that it doesn't lapse until a new one is signed. So we are in that period of negotiation. Mm -hmm. We have had several uh, roundtable meetings to discuss on some of the issues. We have made progress on some of them. Some of them are still lagging behind. And I think that is what has made them to be where they are today. Okay. But to the best of my knowledge, when I spoke to them, what they said were the irreducible minimums. What took them to the strike are three issues. We'll talk about the three issues. Good. Let me take you back to the CBA. Yes. The doctors 
actually think you are changing the terms of the CBA. First, even by what you're saying, that mm. it should have lapsed in 2021. Secondly, mm. Mm. this CBA was registered in court, wasn't it? It was registered. And in court, it's indicated as 2017-2024. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they are of the opinion, first, from what you're saying tonight, and secondly, that you have the intention to renegotiate a CBA that was registered in court. Yes. And you after know, the 100-day strike. Once a CBA has lapsed, it opens a window for negotiation. Fresh negotiation. Yes. But there must be a fulfillment of the terms of that CBA before it lapses. Because as a lawyer, mm. it lapses when one party fulfills or both parties fulfills. I am not a lawyer. I will not argue as a lawyer. I will argue from uh, the policymaker's position. Mm -hmm. What we should ask ourselves, Ken Mejungu, that the matters in that CBA that ought to have been uh, fulfilled from 2017 to 2024, we are here now. Yes. Why weren't they not fulfilled if mm. there were matters that could be fulfilled? And for me tonight, I want to speak to the doctors and to any other union for that matter, that let us not get into signing CBAs for the sake of signing. We ought to negotiate and sign a CBA with the intention to fulfill. So you you think can sign dipped? a CBA yes. for the sake of signing a CBA. And that, I am not ready to do it now, to sign it for the sake of signing. If I'm going to sign a CBA now, then I must have a plan on how to fulfill that CBA. So that CBA mm -hmm. had what I can call limitations yep. or had extremes that couldn't be fulfilled. And that is why we are here where we we'll are. We'll talk about those extremes. Yes. But I need to really clear with this CBA. Yes. Because it's a legal document. How do you intend to navigate that hardly of being registered in court because mm. the negotiations after the 100 days went the court agreed and this was a joint agreement between the ministry and the doctors that this cba is now signed and sealed and shall be fulfilled between 2017 and 2024 fully performed by 2024 it's not been fully performed and now you're saying there were issues in that cba that uh was signed just for the sake of signing so were they duped back then I don't want to this. say they were duped. Mm -hmm. For me, I think the parties did not give a lot of thought in implementation of the CBA. I have said, and I'm committing myself, that if I'm to sign a CBA, I'll sign a CBA knowing very well that there's a plan for implementation of that CBA. So then we need to open the conversation. What are those issues in the CBA that were not implemented? And what are the reasons for them having not been implemented? implemented. Okay. Yes. What are you and one, yeah. I want us first to clarify. Yes. What is a CBA, Ken? It's a collective bargaining agreement between an employer and an employee. We must be very clear on that, first of all. Once we are clear on that, then we can discuss the other details. And one of the reasons why it made it very difficult for that CBA to be implemented on one of the aspects is because of inclusion of non-employees. Explain. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. Explain. I was waiting for it. Explain. Who are the non-employees? Interns. Interns. As it is now, we have interns who are in session. Interns are being given a chance to practice that that they have gone through during the education system, during Seven the years. training, mm -hmm. during the years that they have been in college. Mm -hmm. They graduate, then they get to an intern. That when now you are faced with the actual, uh, actual situation of dealing with patients, then after a year of having practiced that, you are given a license to practice. Without a license to practice, you cannot be employed as a doctor. So they are not employees of anybody. And that is one of the mistakes that happened in that CBA. Okay. Do they undertake the obligations and duties of a, me a qualified medical doctor? They do take, undertake those duties. Okay. And that is where now we need to go down and drill the root cause analysis. They are supposed to be learning. Why do they undertake? Why are they subjected to doing those duties? One is for learning purposes. Learning purposes has a limit to how much you can learn at a certain time. But in this case, they go to extremes. And by the way, I understand them perfectly well, that they do extra many hours. Why do they do it? Mm -hmm. Because the facilities are understaffed. If the facilities are adequately staffed, 
like you are taken to a facility as an intern. You are supposed to be learning. You are supposed to be under supervision. Do several rounds before you are left on your own. But because facilities are understaffed, then the interns end up doing work that they are not supposed to be doing. They end up doing much more than their learning experience. So the root cause that we should be treating, that we should be talking about, how do we... The gap. Take me through the life journey of an intern into being qualified. Apart from the period that you say they're interns and they cannot be left alone, and that is a subject now of a contested CBA. Because now they're being, they're still known as interns, but they're doing the jobs that qualified doctors are doing. After seven years, after the Hippocratic Oath, these interns practice medicine and they're given responsibilities of doctors. That is not in doubt. So why is it an issue when they are asking for adequate remuneration? Mm -hmm. What is remuneration? Ejungu. You have to have offered services and get paid for that services. Remuneration is given to an employee by an employer. I'm explaining to you. These are interns. They are supposed to be under supervision of specialists or experienced medical officers. So we cannot even speak about our remuneration. We are supposed to be ensuring that they remain as students. Had it been that the facilities are are adequately resourced human resourced wise. Yes. human wise yes then this in terms would be doing what is in their record which is supposed to be some specific number of hours for them to learn would not talk about remuneration because they would not be engaged in any job so there is an issue that we must correct and for us to deal with this issue permanently yeah. we must discuss staffing of human resources in health facilities let me explain to you something yeah. just a minute yes this country has been growing for example after devolution in 2013 we had less than 8,000 facilities in this country as we speak now thanks to devolution we have now facilities headed to 15,000 have we recruited to be able to take care of the increased number of facilities that's a question we haven't so we have a gap as a country, we must then deal with this gap, that we fill this gap, so that we let an intern to be an intern. Okay. Yes. Why then are you proposing a separate remuneration from the one that was in the CBA? If they're interns and they're not supposed to be remunerated because they're interns, they're not employees, why as you, and I'll bring up the um, Minister of Health, Secular, what was circulated that went to the SRC now. Why then do you recommend payment to these people that you've described as non-employees? Why then? One, I take recognition of what they do while they're in hospitals. I know that we have a gap, so they're expected to do some work. I take recognition of that. And that is why, if you look at what we have suggested, we were given a minimum and a maximum. I went for the maximum. Ideally, if we had a perfect ideal situation with enough doctors in, in, the, in the facilities, an intern ought not to be paid. But that, why? That because go that is not. labor laws, not to pay interns who are doing a job. An there's intern a minimum is a stipend. Pay. Yes, there's a yes, stipend or minimum. Yes, yes a stipend. Yeah. Yes. So have you looked at what they were getting previously? 200, mostly 206, 206 is 150. Thousand. Let's bring them up. Yes, yeah. yes. 206,000 consolidated. Yes, consolidated. Now, that is one of the reasons why that CBA could not have been implemented in full. If you look at our numbers that we are graduating right now, they are not the same numbers that we used to graduate many years ago. If you look at our fiscal space as a country, we are constrained. Mm -hmm. The standards are we should be able to spend at least 15% of our budget on the health sector. As a country, collectively now, if you take county and national government, we are doing 11%. Mm -hmm. So there's a deficit of 4% until we are able to meet this gap, mm -hmm. Ken Mejungu. And that is why we have to change on how we finance health care. Um not convinced i am not convinced because at the end of the day 
So long as they are in hospitals, they have entitlement. But let me ask you this. Medical interns, as you describe them, are not public servants. They are not state officers. Why did you ask the SRC to give you that minimum and maximum? Why did you go to SRC? I have a letter. I wrote to Treasury that this is what we have been giving interns. I have a budget gap of 4.9 billion. The response that I got from Treasury is that we have a tight physical space. So it's Can you manage mm -hmm. the numbers that you have? Okay. In fact, they say, can you consider unpaid internship? You know? Treasury said that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So as a policy maker, as a decision maker, I have to look back and say, okay, what have they told me? That I have resources, I have to work within the available resources. And by law, you cannot give somebody outside the available resources. You must have resources by the time you are placing them. So I looked at the resources that I have, and we checked across the region what else are interns being given. You compared across we compared, the region? Yes. And I also compared with other interns within the country. And we settled on the numbers that we have now. Against a registered CBA? A registered that CBA. That you cannot quash as the minister, as the CS health. You have nothing to do with that CBA except to implement it. You see, yeah. you implement if it's implementable. So, so if it's not implementable, you, can. you cannot keep crying and jumping up and about for the CBA to implement this itself. Is about you have money. to put mechanisms yes. in place to, to implement. implement. Yes. So this is about money. You don't have the money. That's what you're there saying. There are no resources. If there were resources, would it be different? Of course, yes. If there were resources, it would be different. Probably, mm -hmm. if we had the 4.9 billion, most likely I wouldn't have written to Treasury. Treasury. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't. I would have said, okay, we have enough resources. Let's proceed this way. But look at it critically. And we want to plan. And I'm not just planning about today. I'm not planning about tomorrow. I'm planning a strategic plan for the next five years. What is it that we need to do? So we have to put ourselves on a road that then we can manage. Mm -hmm. Ken, if I were you, we would be discussing how do we fill the gaps that we have in health facilities. That is a healthier discussion. We, we, are, we are going to discuss it. But you see, the elephant in the room is this doctors are not going to go to the hospital, back to the hospital, if the issue of interns specifically is not addressed. I'm looking at this and there are several issues that were raised. There are actually eight issues. Mm -hmm. The first one at the top is failure to provide comprehensive medical insurance, yes. right? That is the first one, the medical allowances. The second one is perennial delayed posting and payment and general mismanagement of internship program. You have read what? The word reads perennial. Perennial delayed, yes. Perennial. Mm. What is perennial? They are posted every year. I have been in the office for a year. So this issue is perennial. Perennial, you cannot resolve by just deciding overnight of what needs to be done. Okay. We have to sit at the table to resolve so that in future, mm -hmm. there'll be nobody writing about perennial. We'll have resolved it for once and for all. So we have to get a long-term solution. We have to take decisions. I like how you're thinking, but my question then is, if you're admitting, if you had resources at the ministry, mm -hmm. then you would not never have this problem you're having. In fact, these in interns would have been absorbed. In fact, they would have been paid because you have the money. So it means that you recognize their importance. It's just that you are not adequately resourced to finance them in hospital. But I want to bring one up. I want to bring uh, the one for the dentist uh, intern. I want you to tell me what aspects of uh, that pay you have a problem with. Karen, could I have the, pay, uh, the, den, the, the dentist intern? So the basic salary that was registered in the CBA is 44,000. Non-practicing allowance is 12,000. Wait the, there. Yes. Non-practicing non allowance. Yes. Yeah. Yet that the, person does not, not even have a license to practice. Why are they getting non-practicing allowance? Because it's standard if you want to work in public hospitals. It's standard. You, it is you can standard opt for because you private. have a license to practice. You do not have a license to even practice. What is that practicing allowance for? You are working to get your license to practice. Just bring it back. <laughs> Just still bring it back. Still bring it back. Okay. I think let's get serious. Yes. Commuter allowance, health risk allowance, emergency call allowance. That was in the other issue, 66,000 on emergency call. This is standard most of them. So the emergency call allowance, there's a problem you also 
Let Why? me tell you. Yes. This are standard allowances for an employed doctor. Standard allowances. By the way, most of the, if you look at the public service uh, rates, mm -hmm. most of the doctor's starting salary would be at this 206, 400. Okay. So these allowances are standard because they are practicing, they are employed as doctors. So they are being given what doctors who are practicing certified are being given? Yes, as a starting uh, as salary. Let me ask, part of the contention of these interns, Waziri, mm. is the ones that were supposed to be posted, right? Which means they have qualified. They're supposed to, because even you will tell me tonight on the table that by April they will all have been posted, right? Let me tell you. Yeah. We have pre-interns, people who have graduated, mm -hmm. yet to be posted as an intern. You become an intern upon being posted. Before that, you are a pre-intern. You are not yet posted. We have interns who are in session now. The cohort that is there will be completing in June. So we are discussing about pre-interns yet to be posted. Those are fresh from their... Uh, they have graduated. Some graduated a year ago, I think the longest, mm -hmm. some a few months ago. Okay. Yeah. So the ones that we're talking about, the ones on the table that you will tell me tonight that are supposed to be posted by the 1st of... Uh, April. In fact, are we they? are beginning posting tomorrow for your information. Uh -huh. Yes. So why did you, you, you get the date to 1st of April? I said by 1st of April, they, they shall will have been all posted. be posted. So under what regime, under what agreement, the CBA or the new one that you're proposing? I have a guidance from SRC. Mm -hmm. So the ones that I'm posting now are based on the guidance that I have received. But why did you take them to the SRC? I mean, this is basic practice. Why must it go to an, a body that determines state officers and public officers interns you have described them as people who should not even be paid why did you have to take it to the SRC to get a guidance that mutilates the cba was it i think uh, maybe you do not want to understand let me make you understand please that i had a budget that we had put in place as a ministry to take care of interns financially and year? we got a gap of 4.9 billion, billion. Mm -hmm. So then when it came to posting, we write to Treasury to tell them we have these interns that we need to post. We had put them in our budget, but our budget, we have a gap. And the gap is 4.9 billion. We need to post. Can you give us this money? Then Treasury writes back and says, please, Waziri, we look at your numbers. This is unsustainable into the foreseeable future. Manage your numbers based on the resources that you have. Okay. And in the long term, in fact, mm -hmm. consider unpaid internship. Advice from Treasury. Yes. And it is because of the physical space that we are in. And that's why, Ken, I'm telling you the bigger conversation that we need to have how do we finance healthcare in this country? Last question on that. You had a meeting on Monday. Straight, yes, I did. Straight after the meeting, um, mm -hmm. You said uh, there was an agreement that was reached. One, I noticed that that meeting was a consultative meeting with several uh, stakeholders. You were present at that meeting. On Monday, yes, I called for the meeting. Yes. The union said they wanted to meet me. Meet you, yes. They actually called, uh, the Secretary General called me on Friday, mm -hmm. asking me to meet them on Saturday. I told them I was not available. Mm -hmm. We can meet on Monday morning. Okay. meeting at 8 a.m. So I'm met. the one who called the meeting yeah. based on their request to see me. Okay. The meeting was between KMPDU and the Ministry of Health. Only? Yes. Why didn't other stakeholders in this, for example, Treasury, why didn't they attend the, your meeting? Uh, Public Service Commission, why didn't they attend that meeting? Because it was a consultative meeting and I see they were invited. Why didn't they attend? Who? Who invited who? I see the letter in the, the meeting that they, uh, they attended on Monday it was a consultative meeting. Called by who? By the ministry. To who? It was called by the ministry. I called because KMPDU. Because there was a crisis, yes. I did not call any other stakeholder. Why? Please don't confuse. Yeah, yeah. Why were they not necessary to attend this meeting? By the time Especially we were calling the meeting yeah. on Monday, mm -hmm. they were, there was a court order. The court gave instructions of what needs to be done. Okay. There is the one nation approach meeting. That is supposed to be convened by head of public service. The letters came yesterday. The meeting has been convened for Thursday. 
This one, the union asked to see me. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who did an invitation letter. So it was between me, the ministry, and them. That's why there was no other stakeholder. There was no other stakeholder. It was my meeting. They asked to see me. Okay. I wouldn't have invited other people. I didn't know why they wanted to see me. You knew because there was a crisis, Waziri. There was yes, a crisis in this see, country. Yes, but you see, if somebody says there's a crisis and yeah. I want to see you, do you call other people to come? Or you first listen to them? So I wanted to listen to what is it that... By the way, they had come to ask me mm -hmm. if we could agree so that then they can proceed and call off the strike. Okay. So I briefed them on what we have done so far. And I actually told them, this is progress. And we agreed that it was progress. Mm -hmm. What have we done so far on matters internship? I briefed them that now I have a commitment from Treasury. I can go ahead and post interns from 1st of April. And they asked, why don't you even post immediately? immediately. I said, no. Mm -hmm. What I have received commitment from is from 1st of April. So I'm going to post interns from 1st of April. But you're doing it tomorrow? Yeah, I'm starting April. tomorrow. By 1st of April, all interns will have their posting letters. You know, there's the, the administrative work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. We have over 3,500 interns. We have to print letters. Letters have to be signed and all that. They have all to be called to come and pick their letter. So we begin tomorrow. Our, uh, our plan is that by 1st of April, each intern should be in their station. But you're doing this under the new advice. Yes. And they're saying without implementing completely the CBA, they're not going back to work. What's going to happen, was it? Ken, yeah. this is an internship that we are offering. Yes. In fact, I have interns who have called me and told me, Waziri, all we need is a license to practice. I have about 50 who have told me they are willing even to work without, they are willing to go for internship without any stipend, without any payment, so that they get their license to practice. And that should be the end game, that they need to practice as a doctor, they need to practice as a pharmacist, as a dentist, but they cannot practice without a license. So what the ministry is doing is to facilitate mm -hmm. for them to get this experience and get a license to go and practice. Ken, we are going to have them after they get their license. And, and they'll be back at me asking for employment. Right now in this country, we have close to 3,000 doctors that are unemployed. Shouldn't we be talking about and them? And the well? is, there's a deficit of 38,000 doctors in this country. Yes, yes, we have a huge deficit. I have just told you that we have a huge gap. So we should be discussing how do we finance healthcare. Once we know how we make money to finance healthcare, we discuss what are these planks of healthcare that we need to finance. We need to have commodities, we need to have equipment, we need to have infrastructure, we need to have human resource for health. But we must discuss how do we make money or how do we get money to finance all this. I agree with you. We have to discuss how to finance healthcare. But I'm looking at a crisis in your hand that you're not going to be able to solve if at all they don't get what they want. So that's why I'm asking. There are people, perhaps the 50 were asking you, but the bigger picture, because tomorrow, in solidarity with the same, same interns and all these issues, we have public hospitals, Kenyatta, Moi, and the rest, joining in the strike. So tomorrow, by tomorrow morning, you will have a bigger crisis in your hand, because just the other day, you toured and there were doctors. But now, they're saying tomorrow we are joining in solidarity. That is the latest from the doctors. So I'm seeing a crisis in your hand that you're not going to be able to solve, and you're not going to progress a discussion on how to improve healthcare without solving this elephant in the roof or room was you know that's, I, that's, I'm, that's I'm, my I'm, I'm surprised mm -hmm. why are you saying i'm not going to, not to be able to resolve because they are going they are joining are you underestimating of, my capacity to resolve instead this of crisis? looking at the solutions that you're giving and i'll ask for the practical solutions mm -hmm. instead of seven days later the others are joining that is a crisis was it i have a plan one of the things that the court ordered is a one nation approach discussion why did, the, why did the court order for that one nation discussion approach? Because this matters. We must look at Ministry of Education. That is where these pre-interns have come, come from. from yeah. We must look at the pipeline. How many students can we onboard in a university? After that, can we be able to take all of them as interns? Them. After that, can yeah. we now absorb them as employees? Mm -hmm. That is a conversation that needs to be taken. So we have Ministry of Education on the table. We have Treasury. How do we finance all these issues? Treasury is there. We have Ministry of Labor. How do we ma manage this labor issues? We have Ministry of uh, Public Service. These people are ideally employed by public service. Okay. You know, yeah. that is why tomorrow we have everybody on the table, including the KMPDU, the union. The meeting has been called for tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. So, for you to say that we have a crisis that we are not going to manage, it's premature. What we are supposed to be discussing 
And what I would ask the unions is mm -hmm. avail yourself for these meetings. And by the way, it's not just that one only. There's a conciliator meeting that is going on. Mm -hmm. And for your information, today, my ministry hosted the union on CBA negotiation. Another CBA. So don't assume that nothing is happening and will not manage this crisis. You know, we there are many things that are, that are happening. happening. You know, yes. we report a lot of these issues here. Yes. And the hospital, there are women going back. I just have a friend who had to leave Nakuru. Mm -hmm. to come and find a private hospital in Nairobi. Yes. Because the hospital that you would have gone to has no doctors. Let me explain to you, in fact, beyond that. Today, when they went to KUT at a rich, mm -hmm. there was a lady who was in maternity waiting for delivery. The doctor who was handling that lady abandoned her. The lady who was just about to deliver. Mm -hmm. The doctor abandoned her. The lady had to be put in an ambulance to a private hospital. Do you know that lady is a wife's doctor? So the doctor, the husband now, was quarreling the doctor colleague who abandoned the wife. So in this matter, we need to be rational. And that is why one of the orders of the court was, can we look at bare minimum services, emergency services that cannot stop? Is it happening? And that discussion is ongoing with the conciliator. So that then we agree, we say, okay, if these issues we are not able to handle in the shortest time possible, this must continue to happen as we wait to resolve this issue. Okay. Those doctors have parents. Those doctors that are, uh, that are on the strike have relatives. I have just given you a classic example of a wife's doctor mm -hmm. who had gone to deliver. So this doctor had to have a personal conversation with a colleague, with a colleague doctor mm -hmm. on why he abandoned the, the wife. One of the things they said today is it's not time for promises. Mm -hmm. It's time for action. Yes. What is the action? What is, you've told me the elaborate plan that you have mm. all the stakeholders on the table. But what is the interim, what is the interim decision that you're making today to ensure that it's not just a promise. It's actually an implementable plan tonight. One of them is posting of interns. By the way, you have projected the numbers, and you're talking about doctors only. There are other cadres of interns. They, 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 all, they were all running. They were all running. Yeah, they were yes. all running, yes. One of the things that is down there is mm -hmm. clinical officer interns. Yes, the 115 you can bring it back. The clinical officer yes. interns. Yes. Those are about 1,200 clinical officer interns. Yes, they'll bring it back, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Previously, these clinical officer interns on internship, they used to get a stipend of 15,000. Okay. That has been enhanced now. When I made my justification to SRC, mm -hmm. they are going to get 35,000. Beryl, could you bring the one for SRC, the numbers that is in the letter from uh, SRC, so that we can see those numbers as so, she tells us, yes. They were getting 15,000 yeah. as a stipend. Mm -hmm. Right now, yes. clinical officer diploma holders intern, 35,000 yes. from uh, 27,000. No, 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 no. Yeah. This is uh, the, the, the proposal. Yeah. Minimum 27, yeah. highest 35. 35 yes. Previously, they were getting 15,000. Okay. From what we submitted to Treasury, mm -hmm. they are going to get 35,000. Okay. So let it the not maximum. look. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. let it not look like it is a one-sided thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. But but you subtracting they were earning 115. The last slide is one actually 100 115. But the other issue with that is they are claiming where is this 2.5? No no to no, no no no. Ken, yeah. yeah. We we need to be factual. Okay. Clinical officer interns. Mm -hmm. Previously, their stipend was 15,000 Kenya shillings. That has now From been... the registered CBA, and we have it, it's 115,000 shillings. That's they are the what lowest. I'm telling you. Yes. We need to be factual. Yes. Clinical officers are not in that CBA. Okay. And I have said there are different cadres of interns. Let's not just focus on the doctors. Mm -hmm. The CPA is for doctors. There are other cadres of interns. We have nursing interns. We have clinical officer interns, degree and diploma. Diploma clinical officer interns were getting a stipend of 15,000. Okay. That has now been enhanced to, to 35,000. 35, okay. Yes. Proposal. Yes. Okay. So let's yeah. not just focus on the reduction only. Mm -hmm. There is also something good that, that has, come, has up. Okay. come up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you that. Where is the 2.5 to 3 billion shillings claim coming from? The, the union are saying the ministry owes them 2.5, between 2.5 billion to 3 billion shillings in uh, um, unpaid dues first, 
they say that even the one the implementation of the CBA, mm -hmm. they were paying, but they were not paying fully. So there was money that was being held, probably ten thousand less, twenty thousand shillings less. So cumulatively, if you take it to 2021, 2017 to 2021, they're one point five billion. If you bring it now to 2024, it's three billion shillings. So they are claiming between two point five and three billion shillings. How are you going to set uh, offset that? Let me explain to you. Mm -hmm. When I began, I told you, there are doctors who are within national and there are doctors who are within the counties. They had that claim on their basic salary, an increment that was supposed to have happened on their basic salary. When we began these negotiations in 2023, yeah. we had a conciliator also at that time. And we went back to check our records. And the unions, if they sit here with me today, they'll tell you, even on our Monday mini, uh, morning meeting, I did tell them, and they agreed with me. For those doctors with the national government, those within our institutions, the Ministry of Health has met its end of the bargain. In fact, we have overpaid, and they're supposed to be refunding money. <laughs> the claims that they are having mm -hmm. is for doctors working in the county governments. How does the Ministry of Health pay for doctors working in the county governments? We are not the employers. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that claim can be put to the county governments, not to the Ministry of Health. The 2.5 to 3 billion? Yes. It's not national government? It is not. Ask Ms. Keller. Ask WG. They know. On Monday, we did discuss. And, I, and in fact, I told them they need to return. They need to, to refund the overpayment. For those in national government, when we do the tabulations, we have overpaid. So they need to refund. But as being good people, we are not asking for that refund. So, I know you are holding a meeting, but, um, and I'll not estimate your ability to resolve this crisis. Minimum services from tomorrow ground to a halt. There are already um, patients across the country suffering. What is the plan, Waziri? You what know, is the plan? Uh, services will be offered. By who? That I can assure you. Mm -hmm. We are going to make all plans possible to ensure that services are offered. By who is it? I have told you, mm. we have close to 3,000 doctors who are unemployed. You want to bring Let me them? tell you, this evening, we will not allow a crisis to happen. I have given instructions to Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital. I have given instructions to Kenyatta National Hospital to recruit doctors. And once we recruit, that is it. We are Overnight. going to recruit. Yes. We have people that even needed to man and let me tell you, when we went, to, when uh, Kenyatta University and Referral Hospital went to their database, people who have been wanting to come for locum, doctors, they had over 400 people. And I spoke to the chair, I spoke to the CEO, I said, we cannot avoid, we cannot afford to have a gap. We have patients in ICU, we have patients in critical care, we have babies in the neonatal units. So can you call people on locum? And they called and tonight the services yeah. are being offered. And they will face the same predicament that these doctors are facing. Until we find a lasting solution. Are you going to victimize the doctors that are currently exercising their right? They have been ordered by the court to suspend the strike. Choices have consequences. Major. The ministry has been ordered through a CBA to implement that CBA by the same court. We have implemented to the extent Partially. possible. <laughs> implementable. So why is it that you don't want us to have the bigger conversation of how do we... I, I, I'm doing it. The reason <laughs> I explain this to you is because I am seeing a crisis and I'm just wondering how you are getting out of it. So yes. you brought a new angle that now takes me back. You are actually going ahead to put other doctors in the hospitals as these other ones are out. Would you want to lose your relative? I wouldn't want no to doctor. lose even someone I don't know. Yes. So we have to put a measure in place. The places have to be manned. There's an ICU. Somebody has to take care of the patients. There's an emergency. Somebody has to take care of the patients. So I cannot sit and say, since the doctors are on the strike, then we sit. No. Even those doctor, doctors are human beings. They can get sick and they'll need people and to And they will need them. people to take care of them. So mm -hmm. this is a place of rational thinking. They have been called to a negotiating table. And not even by the Ministry of Health, by Head of Public Service. And Head of Public Service has brought together all the players, all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Is in this not the place for them to come and pour out their issues? What if you recruit, they start working, and you resolve this crisis the way you're saying you're going to resolve it? What happens? You see, mm -hmm. Ken, if you are supposed to be on duty and you are not on duty, we have gotten somebody else to do the job. 
Surely, what do you expect? To be fired? What do you expect? You're going to fire them? If I have recruited somebody to do the job, I allow the person to do the job. I can see you are reading their comments. Uh, no, no, I'm not looking. I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> reason I'm looking, I was trying to find out how many doctors do we have so far? In uh, practicing in uh, public hospitals? We have uh, close to 2,000. In, uh, in county government, close to 2,000. In national government, about 1,700. In private, we have about 3,000. In faith based, we have close to 700. And you can replace the ones in public hospitals, just like that? We have 3,000. Waiting. Close to 3,000. On the waiting list. Unemployed doctors who are waiting. Let me tell you, you know, we need to resolve this internship issue. Yes. Because once we resolve and they have a license, they go to the waiting list. So we have to resolve how do we finance healthcare and ensure nobody goes to the waiting list. How do we finance healthcare to the extent that you come into internship immediately after you graduate, you finish your internship, you get absorbed. That is where we need to get to as a country. Okay. So can we look at how do we raise resources to, to take care of health? NHIF is now defunct and uh, the monies that were stored there, I don't know where they are. There's a new body that is coming in to replace. Are these doctors going to get their money? Is it going to be cross-transferred? Thank you. We have now gotten to what I want. <laughs> the conversation of how do we raise money to take care of all the issues in the health sector. So what we have done, Ken Mejungu, is that due to the change in, uh, in realignment from focusing on curative to preventive and promotive health care, we have had, and to achieve universal health coverage, we went ahead to change the laws. And in changing the laws, one of the things that we were struggling is how do we raise resources for health care? So in the change, we now have social health insurance fund where we are saying it is mandatory for all Kenyans to be part of the social health insurance fund so that we raise enough resources. And once we raise those resources, we have a plan that the resources that we raise, one, will ensure that we have adequate commodities in the facilities, that you'll not go to a hospital and be told, Akuna Dawa, and Aununwe Palenje. We want to do away with that. These resources that we raise will ensure that we have adequate equipment for diagnostics and for all other things that need to be done in a health center. These resources that we raise will ensure that we have adequate human resource for health so that when an intern goes for internship, they are indeed an intern. They are not doing the work of the doctor. Because you, doc, uh, the hospitals are well resourced. Yes, at that time. the hospitals are well resourced. That mm. is our intention and that is why now we are transiting. We have a transitional committee that is in place mm. to ensure that the transition is as seamless as possible. In fact, a patient should not notice that is our plan, that okay. there is a transition mm -hmm. from NHIF to SHA, Social Health Authority. Mm -hmm. The transition roadmap, we already have it. In fact, based on the regulations that were already gazetted, were approved, went through the system, we begin registrations this month. Okay. Yeah. Registrations, I wanted to ask why the registration that was supposed to happen hasn't started, but I think you've just preempted that question. But let me ask you about um, the um, the contributions that go into that kitty. One of the proposals that I think I have seen is uh, the removal from comprehensive cover. And now the recommendation is another cover that is not the comprehensive cover as you explained. So my question is, what happens to this cadre of public servants who have been used to that comprehensive cover? What happens to them? Uh, one, we need to ask ourselves, why was there a comprehensive cover? It's because the general cover that NHIF was providing was somehow inferior. So what we have done now is to get a benefit package that is expanded, that would ideally cover everything that was covered within the comprehensive cover. Mm -hmm. So we have worked out an essential benefits uh, package to cover from maternity, childbirth, as the person goes through adulthood up to when God forbid, mm -hmm. when you lose your life. So the essential benefit pack package that we have right now is covering even including the last respect that previously NHIF was not covering. So we have expanded the package. Having said that, should anyone want to have much more than what we are saying is the what you're benefit yeah, package? Yeah. They are free to do it. Okay. Yes. On their own. On their own. How much do you expect to raise with this essential benefit annually? Uh, 
One is that under, let me explain, under Social Health Authority, we have three funds. We have the Primary Health Care Fund that is publicly funded through Exchequer. So members or Kenyans are not expected to make any contribution. Mm -hmm. You're expected that when you are visited by your community health promoter, that is level one of service, you don't pay for anything. It is expected that when you walk into a level two facility, you don't pay anything. When you walk into a level three facility, you don't pay anything. That is where primary health cover and ends. Yeah. The second uh, fund under this is the social health insurance fund that is contributory in, in, in nature. That is where each Kenyan is contributing 2.75% okay. of their to, income to that into that kit. Mm -hmm. Then we have the third fund, which is the emergency, chronic, and critical illness fund, also not contributory, exchequer. So the resources that we need at the primary health care is about 50 billion. Okay. So we are still trying to seek government how it puts together exchequer to be able to meet the 50 mm -hmm. billion. Mm -hmm. The resources that we need for SHIF, Social Health Insurance Fund, the one now we project to get collection is 140 billion. From the 2.7? From the 2.75%. Okay. 140 billion. Then we expect them to have resources for the third fund, the ECCIF, of about 49 billion. Okay. Yeah. So uh, cumulative, you're talking about 250 billion yes. shillings. Yes. Okay. I have an issue with uh, the universal health care mm -hmm. or coverage. Yes. Uh, during COVID, there's this team that was also brought in under universal health coverage. Mm -hmm. They were told to work for three years mm -hmm. and then they'll be absorbed after another three years. Mm -hmm. You were not in office that time, mm -hmm. but the ministry was going on. Yes. What true. happens to these people? Uh, and by the way, today they came singing at the Ministry of Health that they want PNP. Joyf joyful songs? That they want permanent and pensionable. Jo <laughs> Those are not joyful so, songs. I'm just telling you, yes. for you to know that I'm aware okay. of the issue. Okay. What happened, and as you rightfully put it, they were recruited during that piloting mm -hmm. of universal health coverage. About 8,500 uh, and I think 80 or 50, thereabout. People across different cadres. We have nurses, we yeah. have clinical officers, public health officers, nutritionists, and all that. They were recruited under that cohort. In that recruitment, they had a fixed uh, sum in terms of payment for the fixed period of three years. When we just came into office, one of the issues that we ran into is that that term was coming to an end. Mm -hmm. So again, as it is, because the person uh, responsible for recruitment for public is Public Service Commission. We did write to Public Service Commission to renew the contracts of this uh, UHC staff mm. for three years. For another three years. Public Service Commission wrote back to the ministry and said, we will not renew for three years. We will renew for a year. And within this year, we will put in place mechanisms to ensure that they are employed Absolutely. permanent and mm -hmm. pensionable. Mm -hmm. So those mechanisms are the ones that are being put in place. Mm -hmm. My expectation mm -hmm. is that we should be able to absorb them permanent and pensionable. Mm -hmm. And for your information, there are a number of counties that have already gone ahead to absorb their UHC staff into permanent and pensionable. Mm -hmm. For example, Mandera County, it absorbed everyone. Okay. Today I have just had a discussion in Sakaja. He has been absorbing from that list. He is left with a few to finalize. I've had discussion with Baringo County. I've had discussions with Elgeo, Maraquet, and West Pokot County. They have been absorbing under different, uh, some, some, some of those people. Mm -hmm. So it is expected that even at the point of now a conversion, we'll, it will we'll not be talking about the 8,500. We'll be talking about a few. Okay. But the plan is that then they should get into permanent pension. I have about six minutes on the clock, yes. but I want to play the video of the week. I know time flies <laughs> when you're having fun. <laughs> the video of the week, then we'll come back and conclude with the CS. Now, the context of this video of the week is um, what's happening with the Africa Union Commission. I sat with Aidan Duale. He was just then a member of parliament. He had just uh, been removed as, I think, majority leader. And he actually told me then, that's almost three, four years ago, that they can indeed work with Ray Lodinga. Take a look at the video of the week. Forming the Hustler Coalition. But if we, if down the line, of course we will not join the, the orphans. If we join Honorable Ray Lodinga, any group, even if we join you, within the then, umbrella of William Ruto as yeah, our leader, yes. then yeah, I have no okay. problem. All right, thank you very much. And I think, if I'm the best person to work with, yeah. the best person to partner with, in my opinion, if I must, yeah. is uh, Raila Odinga. And the reason why? 
We worked with him uh, before. Uh, before. So and, we know and, him. And, and, and I, I, I interviewed him. I, I didn't work with, I didn't did work with, I've never been a member of KANU. I've never worked with Musalia. I've never worked with Kalonis. Uh, Raila Odinga, uh, <laughs> we, 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 share, we share a political gene. Yes. So, and uh, in politics, there are no permanent enemies. enemies and, okay. Great. But uh, for now, mm -hmm. for now, we are busy uh, building uh, a nation, and we are busy, and I am one of the leaders. Uh, you, you know, CS, back in 2012, I, I, I was in Garissa, and I met uh, the now Defense Cabinet Secretary. And he told me, Ken, watch out. We are going to take this government. And later on, uh, he told me again at Bomas of Kenya, um, 2022. He told me before they he told me we are going to take. So that's one of the things. He also told me then that they can work and it's indeed happening. Let me take Please, you. Please, Ken, yeah. watch out. We are going to resolve this doctor's issue for once but not by and for them. all. But not, not by this them. is the government that has the boldness to make the correct decision. This is the government that will not sign a CBA that it cannot implement. This is the government that is going to sort out. From the issue that the doctors have written as perennial, we are going to bury them. From this crisis, we are going to find a permanent solution. By causing... Okay, I have asked you that question severally. Mm -hmm. Now, as we end, this is a question uh, that a doctor intern asked on social media mm -hmm. that I need to ask you also. They say, um, while they are being frustrated with uh, employment and uh, being absorbed, there's also the issue of postgraduate courses. The government stopped supporting them for postgraduate courses. Not factual. Mm -hmm. The government has been supporting them, but there is an arrears. Let me explain. Yes. When uh, doctors go into postgraduates, most of them employed at the counties or at different facilities. Most of them, you know, in terms of career progression, they would like to specialize into a specific. Uh, medical officer, maybe one wants to be a gyna, one wants to be a surgeon and physician and all that. So government has been paying and it continues to pay. But we are in areas. Okay. So there was an issue where the university had said that it will not give exams to all those with arrears. In our Monday morning, and that is why I said it was a good meeting, mm -hmm. from that discussion, the PS for Medical Services, Kim Tai, is going to sit with the vice chancellor to reconcile the arrears. Okay. And we have committed, we have money now in the budget to pay all those arrears. So by the time the doctors are going to sit for their exams in September and October, mm -hmm. there will you be no pay. arrears. Okay. But again, mm -hmm. We really need to look at that program because one this postgraduate as a country we need to focus where is it that we have minimal specialists i can tell you from where i sit as the person in charge of decision making and policy at the Ministry of health we have enough guidance as a country, in the country. Okay. so then we should now be working towards how do we build capacity in these other specialities that we do not have sufficient for example ncds are on the rise Cancer is on the right. So as a country, then mm -hmm. we need people now to specialize in right. oncologists. Mm -hmm. So then we are going to have some discussion there also to neaten that so that any postgraduate is towards filling the existing gap, the specialities that are there in terms of a, a gap. Okay. But those that we already have, for example, Gaine, those anymore. then we will say, no, 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 no. no. Not anymore. Let's fill the gap that we have. W one thing you told me the deficit of uh, um, the deficit that we have in the institutions. Yes. Um, could you explain the rationale? Probably, uh, I know we are running out of time. Of the government uh, integrating doctors from outside, the way they did with Cubans, yet we have a deficit. What was the rationale for that? And yet we have a deficit, and we have Kenyans on the waiting list. Uh, for the record, that program we ended it. Mm -hmm. I did end it while in office. Mm -hmm. We said no. Mm -hmm. We cannot be having Cuban doctors while we have our own. Mm -hmm. The rationale by that time was one, to f and by the way, it was during a similar crisis <laughs> of a strike. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the government's rationale was to fill the gap mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in, the, in the interim, but equally mm -hmm. to have them come and work together with the Kenyan doctors so that then we are able to borrow from their system mm -hmm. of primary health care. By the way, they, they specialize on primary health care mm -hmm. in Cuba. Yeah. And those even specialists go to visit patients 
in their houses. That is what we expected. We even did an exchange program. Some uh, mm -hmm. doctors from Kenya went to Cuba, practiced, came back. They graduated, they came back. So now we have the same. We are going to integrate the same. Okay. Uh, and I hope that the doctors do not push government to looking for doctors from elsewhere. From yeah, yeah, now that we have sufficient resources. Because that's what exactly they're doing, bringing other people. You can bring other people because they're pushing it to the world. As we end the show, yes. um, I don't hold brief for Dr. Amot. <laughs> I don't hold. But it's a concern. Five mm -hmm. years acting. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been advertised again. Yes. What are some of the qualifications and what has disqualified him in five years to now extend that after acting for five years, you need another one? You need a substantive medical director. What's going on? One, clarity, to clarify. The advert does not exclude him. He can apply. He can apply. Yeah. He is not excluded from the application. The issue around that position has been what was put in the Health Act. You know, there's this danger of you put in place a law reinforcing it for certain cadres of certain people. Okay. So anytime public service uh, advertise for that position, because the, the, the act now says that it has to be a medical uh, officer. Mm -hmm. Other cadres, the nurses are saying, no, we can also make good uh, director generals. Yeah. The clinical officers, the public health, the nutritionists, other cadres are saying now they can make good director generals as well. So if you look at the advert that went out latest, I think uh, two days ago, is that now that space has been Expand. opened up yeah. and expanded, mm -hmm. that if you have a course in medical related field, that has now been expanded. Based on that expansion, then these other cadres can apply. So now Amoth is applying as well. And I have confidence, given the, the experience that he has, mm -hmm. he should emerge as the best unless he fumbles during the interview. Mm -hmm. But I have confidence that he has adequate experience. He should be ahead of the pack. After five years, why don't you just absorb? I wish it was that easy. Yeah. I, my hands are tied by the law. Mm -hmm. If it was, in fact, I wanted to confirm him the day I landed in the office. Really? If you listen to my speech when I was taking up from Tahi Kagwe, mm -hmm. three quarters of the people who sat on the, on the table as directors were in acting capacity. Mm -hmm. And even now, they are in acting capacity. We have Kenyans who feel that they have a right to everything. When we did our structure, now to ensure that we fill these positions permanently, somebody went to court, they were awarded by the courts. Okay. So now at least we have uh, managed to finalize on the structures. We have sent our indents to public service commission. And as a result, that is when you, see, you saw the adverts now coming out okay. so that we can now substantively fill mm. the positions. Okay, I'm glad that, that um, you, at least the ministry, obeyed the court on that. Minimum. I'm told we by do him. obey. <laughs> Especially on the CBA. Minimum here uh, is if you implement the internship program according to the CBA, these doctors are able and are willing to go back to the hospital as soon as tomorrow. That's the imperative according to them. I have said... Can. Would it work? Let me just ask, would it work? If they gave you that as the minimum, why don't you then just go with implementing the CBA and absorbing these interns the way this program should run and we are going to back to the hospital tomorrow? Is that workable? Because there are a lot of issues. Let but me that tell only, you, yeah. I can even say they come tomorrow if it is under the, the, that CBA. But they will work for the year and there will be no money to pay them. Okay, okay. That's a they challenge. will not get anything. That's a challenge. Yes, that and is a challenge. And they'll still be on your neck. It will st they'll still come back to me. Mm -hmm. So how about we just resolve this issue once and for, for once and for all. And I'm inviting to them to the table. Okay. Please come. Let us resolve this issue for once and for all. Are you committed? Very to negotiate committed. With them? Very committed and convicted that we are on the right journey to resolve this issue. Holding joint responsibility, I don't know what it's called in, uh, within the cabinet, but the joint respo collective, collective responsibility. responsibility. Yes. Your colleague in labor, yes. when they were going to negotiate, 18 out of 20 were lawyers. Only two were from the ministry. Is that goodwill? Lawyers that goodwill? from? Sent by the ministry of labor. No. You the last know, meeting. Yeah. the conciliatory meeting that was called, and I'm in copy of the letter, mm -hmm. there are three people who were appointed as conciliators. Those are the people that were to drive the process. As a ministry, we sent our state council, mm -hmm. we sent our secretary for administration, we sent our deputy director general, we sent our director for human resource, uh, for human resource, and we sent our, um, who else did we send? The DG. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, 
the ministry is at liberty to send people who can resolve the issue. Because again, you see, you cannot have certain people sitting there, yet you cannot make decisions. You may end up with a decision that you can't implement. So you first have the technical people sitting so that whatever it is that they decide, then it gets upwards to a level that then it is, when a decision is taken at this level, it is implementable. Okay. Otherwise, you can go there as cabinet sectors. We say, okay, from tomorrow we do one, two, three. And then you, then you come down and realize the technical officers tell you, oh. So those are technical it? officers. You, you so cannot, you still think yeah, yeah. it was goodwill because that's one of the things they said at the press conference today. Yes. And they don't say goodwill. It was goodwill. On the first day of the conciliator meetings, the union does not appear. They send their lawyer. Okay. Yeah, so I think these are technical matters that need to be discussed and understood. Then they can be brought to a level of decision making. Like that CBA, if I read it with a lay woman's uh, mind, there are things that I might misinterpret. Mm -hmm. But when you have a state council, you have a technical officer, they interpret those issues. So that by the time they are bringing to my table to make a decision, it's an informed decision. Okay. Yeah. Too much to talk about. Too a little lot. time. Can you imagine one hour is gone? But I want to thank you, CS, for coming and sharing this uh, with Kenyans. At least now they know mm -hmm. where um, it bites and Let's see what happens in the coming days because tomorrow we are hosting, my colleague Ashley will be hosting uh, the officials from Kenya uh, KMPDU and we'll likely hear the side of the story and collaborate mm -hmm. some of the things that uh, the CS is saying today. But I want to thank you very much and being candid and uh, honoring us with your answers tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Ken. We are available even on this, on this table with the unions mm -hmm. because I believe when two people reason together, they'll find a solution. Okay. So we are available to discuss so that it should not be us versus Damn. them. The this problem yeah. is for all of us to find a solution. Okay. So based on the guidelines, mm -hmm. I want to make an announcement to all the interns. We are starting posting tomorrow. Okay. Please come and start picking your letters. The concern is After under what After that, CBA. <laughs> you will get your license yeah. and you can be get employment whether in government, in private or even overseas. Okay. Their, co their concern is under what regime. But thank you so much for coming. Thank and you. I'm glad you said you are open to a discussion across the table with the union. Yes. I'm looking forward to holding that discussion. Let's say if you resolve this crisis within the week, I will call you to say you did a good job. If you don't, next week, I humbly request that we come and talk about it across the table so that Kenyans can understand from the two of you where the problem is. My name is Ken Mijung on behalf of the whole team. Poli Kapomondi on sign language earlier on and everyone that has made this a success and Waziri. Have a good night. God bless. See you again next week. Same place, same time.